Hello and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Uh, today we're going to show you how to hook up point motors using an Arduino. Uh, this point motor is under uh, full control um, of an Arduino and uh, today we're going to show you how to um, achieve that. So this video is a little bit long um, but it walks you through the whole thing step by step so um, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, get some uh, point motors working. Hello and welcome to another uh, Tech Tuesday from Double O Rail. So today uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we are going to be uh, using this Arduino relay board here um, along with an Arduino uh, Uno and this breadboard and some wiring um, to drive uh, one of these which is a uh, Pico uh, PL11 um, point motor now you can use this setup to basically drive uh, any kind of point motor, uh, whether it's um, a Gauge Master, PM1 or PM2, uh, one of the Hornby ones or, or another brand. Um, I, this works with, with all of them. Um, I'm just using the, the PL11 because uh, it was just uh, a little bit easier to demonstrate on the uh, table here. So um, one of the things that we're going to need um, for this particular project is a 12-volt uh, power supply. Uh, this uh, relay board uh, requires a, a 12 volt uh, a DC input and um, the Arduino only kicks out a uh, 5 volt uh, DC or 3.3 volt DC. So um, it, with all sorts of uh, projects related to the Arduino anyway, you're going to need a stable uh, you know, uh, five, 5 volt source to power the Arduino and then when you do things like these relay boards, um, you, you're going to need uh, a 12 volt supply. So I'm actually going to have in total, I think maybe seven or eight of these boards uh, controlling all of the, the point motors on the layout. So um, I needed a pretty decent uh, 12 volt supply. So um, I looked around and I first of all, I thought maybe I could use uh, some of the train controllers. Um, after all, the H&M, for example, uh, are supposed to have a uh, 12 volt DC side socket. And um, when I took the um, multimeter though, uh, on these and uh, hooked it up. Um, I actually discovered that the uh, H&M controllers were outputting about uh, 16 volts uh, DC and uh, some of the uh, Bachmann controllers were outputting between 16 volt and, and 20 volt DC and uh, I had one or two that were doing some very weird things altogether. Um, now I checked the multimeter and it works okay so I'm guessing uh, some of these Bachmann power supplies may be uh, doing something funny. Um, so that's really not good for uh, digital electronics uh, like the Arduino um, or these relay boards. They really need a, a stable power source. Um, so what I decided to do is uh, use a PC um, power supply. Now this isn't your regular uh, ATX power supply. This is one of the older um, AT power supplies that have the uh, big clunky button on them um, and they also have uh, not the ATX 12 volt connectors but they have these original PC uh, motherboard connectors um, so these you can still buy uh, surprisingly um, I think they haven't put these into computers for, for many years um, I think Pentiums, the original Pentiums might be the, the last uh, machine. So this came out of a uh, 46 DX4100 and uh, it's one I just had laying around um, and one of the problems I had with it was that the power supply worked fine um, but the fan here um, was not working so uh, to get it working again um, I took the cover off the um, power supply and this is obviously something you want to do um, while it's switched off now this thing has big clunky capacitors in it uh, right here and if you touch those when they're fully charged, um, they could possibly kill you. So um, be very, very careful if you do open up one of these power supplies. Um, I do not recommend that you do unless you know what you're doing. Um, I have an uh, engineering degree, uh, so I'm fairly well versed in analog and digital electronics. Um, so I just would, wouldn't recommend opening up one of these if you don't know what you're doing. Um, now you can buy these new. Uh, I found them on Newegg, for example, here in the United States. Um, for about $20, uh, so rather than taking apart an old PC, I would highly suggest just buying a new one. Um, I'm actually uh, got uh, two of these new ones on order, 
um, but they weren't here on time to do the video, so I uh, decided to take apart the old power supply instead. So um, to get the fan running again, as you can see here, it's running uh, very nicely. Um, in fact, if I just uh, stick something that will be a piece of paper or something in front of it, uh, you will see that it is. Um, well, it is, it is working. Sorry, see. Um, that it's uh, that's working okay. Um, so basically, uh, all you have to do is uh, with the power off and it hasn't been powered for a while, uh, take the four top screws off and uh, the uh, case like this will will come off. And then um, all you have to do is there's uh, four screws on the back um, like these uh, that basically uh, come out to let the fan out. And um, then there's uh, if you look right here in the dead center. Um, there's a bearing and so what I did was I took some of our uh, synthetic oil that's for model trains and uh, just uh, drop some on that part and then uh, when you take, I'll show you in a second, but when you take the fan out um, there's a sticker on the other side, you just uh, use a knife, I uh, use a uh, pen knife uh, to remove the sticker, uh, peel it back a little bit and it will reveal the other part of the bearing and you just uh, drop some oil on that and um, it will uh, let you uh, basically get the motor back running again and uh, you let it run for about five or ten minutes uh, keep applying oil um, while it's running so for example uh, you just take a very tiny amount and just squeeze it out on there and um, it will eventually uh, get running back to its uh, peak levels and uh, we're not going to be taxing this power supply very much so once it's uh, working and it's not sticking uh, you should be good to go so uh, this is now working fine, so what I'm going to do is uh, take the big clunky button and uh, push it and you should hear it turn off like so. And um, now, this is uh, one of the things you should do when you do this is uh, very carefully uh, remove the power and then just uh, press the big clunky button again. What this does, it will actually discharge the capacitors for you and uh, make it a little bit safer. Um, to, to work with. So if I remove uh, the power supply fan here, uh, you can see there's a sticker. Uh, if I take the uh, pen knife and uh, with the pen knife blade, uh, just pull it, the sticker back a little bit and then you should be able to peel it back. And you can see in there there's like a kind of a plastic piece um, and that comes out. I may have uh, got it stuck in there now. Ah, there you go. Um, so that reveals uh, the bearing in there. And then all you do is uh, take some oil and uh, drop it on the bearing like so. And um, now all you do is just uh, let it run for a few minutes, uh, reassemble it, and uh, let it run for a few more minutes. And then it will give you a uh, 12 volt and a uh, 5 volt power supply. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how you can use um, the power supply without actually uh, having to cut into the power supply or do anything like that. And what you'll need is some kind of um, adapter cable um, for like disk drives. Um, something uh, basically like this. This, for example, is uh, one I had laying around. It does uh, the uh, standard old um, ID hard drive power cable uh, to SATA. And what we're going to what we're going to do is basically uh, cut the SATA connector off and the yellow and black will give us uh, 12 volt DC and then the red and black here will give us uh, 5 volt DC and then we can use those in terminal box um, to provide a power bus and the nice thing with these power supplies is you get about uh, 1, 2, you get at least 3 and you can also get 12 volt and 5 volt um, from the three and a half inch connectors as well if you want to. Um, but this way you can use one of these and um, get your power bus without actually damaging your power supply. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, reassemble this real quick and then we'll uh, get on to the uh, Arduino part of the project.
Okay, so it's been uh, reassembled and uh, you basically have your power switch here. Uh, it's got some uh, mounting points to it so you can always uh, mount it to you know, your baseboard or uh, under your baseboard or something like that. Um, these connectors, you want to make sure that they're uh, still connected properly, they can come out. Um, and other than that, um, pretty much good to go. Um, now there's some connectors on this side that we're going to use and some we're not going to use. Um, we're not going to use the uh, motherboard connectors, uh, so you might want to uh, just, like tape those up. Um, I'm also not going to use um, the power supply uh, floppy drive uh, connectors, uh, since there's no easy way to connect those up without buying some components. Uh, so we're going to leave those alone. And if I do need um, additional power supply, uh, we do have these, but. Uh, one of the 12 volts uh, on here should be good enough for what we want to do today. Um, so we're basically going to just uh, tape these connectors up and uh, use this one that's right here. Now, one other thing to point out is um, these old um, AT power supplies, um, they had a connector here for um, the monitor. Uh, since you're not going to be using this, um, you may want to tape that up uh, just so nobody does anything to it. Um, the other thing here is there's this 115 volt, uh, 220 volt uh, supply switch. Uh, I'm not going to switch it because when I look, it'll probably break or something. Um, if you're in the UK, you want to make sure this is set to uh, 220. Uh, if you're here in the United States, you want to make sure it's set to 115. So um, some of these switch mode power supplies can uh, work off both supplies, but they need this uh, switch switched over. Um, now the newer ATX ones uh, will auto sense, uh, a lot of them will. Now you can't use uh, an ATX power supply, and well I guess you could, but um, you, you, the ATX power supply you're going to have to bypass the power button because it usually gets it from the motherboard. Um, I guess if you have a uh, computer uh, next to your layout or that you use to run your layout, uh, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't get uh, the 12 volt supply and the uh, 5 volt supply. Um, plug one of these in, cut these wires, uh, solder some extra length um, out of your computer and into your uh, layout. Uh, you could do that as well if you don't want to uh, require a power supply. But for me, I'm going to use a dedicated power supply uh, just for this specific purpose. Um, so what I would do is that uh, if you have one of these switches, uh, tape it up as well. Especially if you have little kids who like to uh, mess with things. Um, you don't want um, them to switch that. You'll blow things up. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to get the uh, electrical tape here and uh, I have absolutely no fingernails so this may take longer than it should um, so, so what we'll do is um, just turn this over like so and we're going to tape uh, this up so we'll tape that up like so and uh, you want to make sure it's not uh, fouling up the fan and you might want to just send it around the corner a little bit and uh, We'll get the uh, knife like so, and just uh, cut the electrical tape like that. Um, I also said that I was going to tape up uh, this connector here, and it's perfectly safe to do this, uh, especially if you use electrical tape. Um, I would not use uh, solid tape. I uh, wouldn't use uh, foil tape or duct tape or anything like that. Uh, stick with the electrical tape. Uh, it's an insulator, and it will have a higher... Uh, resistance to fire as well. Um, now I wouldn't like recommend you leave this thing running um, all the time. Um, when you're not using your layout, make sure you switch it off. Um, but to provide um, one more Arduino's with uh, 5 volt and uh, one more of these uh, relay boards with 12 volts, uh, this is perfect. Alright, so we've got this ready to go. So what we're going to do now is do a couple of safety checks uh, with the multimeter and I'll show you how to do that next. Alright, so um, what we're going to do now is uh, hit the uh, clunky button again to uh, bring power supply on and you should be able to hear it. We've got a good fan uh, flowing here so we're, we're good there. And we've uh, removed any kind of conductors away from this thing. So uh, what we're going to do next is uh, find, this is our power source that we're going to use. Now um, on these connectors, uh, there are two colored ones and two black ones. Um, the yellow and black here uh, provide 
12 volt positive uh, DC and the red and black provide 5 volt so we're going to use the uh, 5 volt bus um, to provide us with um, 5 volts for the Arduino and then we're going to use um, this uh, yellow and black to provide the 12 volts uh, for the relay boards um, now if you didn't want to do this uh, for the Arduino you could also use um, the USB hub and when be one of those uh, iPhone or um, uh, Android uh, chargers that have the uh, removable USB plug from the socket that goes into the wall and you can just plug one of those into the wall and plug the uh, USB cable into the, um, you'd swap out the USB cable but you plug in your USB hub into that uh, socket and then you can power uh, as many Arduinos as you want from that USB hub. Um, but for today we're going to go and show you how to test out using this uh, power supply. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to need a multimeter. Uh, this is a very cheap digital multimeter. And I think it's got like a 3 or 4% error on the last digit. But it, we just want an approximation to make sure it's uh, working okay. So we're going to switch it to V uh, for volts. And you can see here it's on uh, auto. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the range button. And it's currently in millivolts, uh, which is not much good to us. Um, now it's in volts to one, you know, at one, uh, three decimal places. We, we need it a little bit uh, higher. And here's two, which will work fine. So we've got uh, two uh, primary digits and then uh, two decimal places. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the uh, red probe and insert it into the uh, yellow uh, socket there. And then you take the other one and insert it into the black. And you can see there, if I move my hand out of the way, um, that we're getting about 11.38 volts um, out of this power supply. Now this digital meter is a little bit cheap, so it's probably really giving us closer to 12 volts, and there's a bit of error um, on the end digits. And we'll find out pretty soon, because if this isn't providing a full 12 volts, or something close to it, um, the uh, board is more than likely going to complain about it. Um, then likewise, uh, you put the black one uh, into the black here, and the red one into the red, and you can see there we're getting uh, just over 5 volts, uh, 5.14 volts. Um, so this should be good enough uh, for a 5 volt power supply. Now I'd recommend, like I said, buying a new one. A uh, new one's going to probably give you a better uh, power source. Uh, just make sure it's a PC AT power supply because they come with a switch uh, as opposed to a ATX one. And unless, of course, you want to run cables out of your computer. Okay, so what we're going to do next is uh, take this donor cable and basically uh, cut and trim it. So uh, it's not very hard. Um, we're just going to use a set of wire cutters and a pair of snips uh, to basically uh, get these uh, connectors apart. Um, to give us the maximum kind of length of distance, I'm going to kind of cut this as close as I can to the uh, cable like this. And it may take a couple of goes. Uh, it may not be able to cut both of them at once. There's one. There's two. And you just want to keep these separated so that I. Uh, you know which are which. Like so. So you're left with this type of connector. And uh, you should probably throw this in the drunk. Uh, you're not going to use it. And it's not really going to be good for anything. So uh, throw that away. Uh, so all I'm going to do is uh, take the snips here. And uh, let's do it the old fashioned way. Um, uh, several people didn't like it when I did this the other couple weeks ago in a video. But uh, it works. So we're going to roll with it. Now you just want to get enough of in the insulation off uh, so that you can uh, twist the wire like this. And it's uh, good to go. Now what we are going to do is we'll probably uh, use some electrical tape on that as well just to uh, secure it up a little bit and this is going to go into a terminal block uh, likewise with the uh, black one here and you just uh, twist it like so and this will be one pair uh, you just want to make sure you don't pull the uh, crimps out of the other end while you do this um,
There's some pretty heavy insulation that they use on these uh, old PC cables, but hey, it works. Alright, so now we've got our two pairs. Um, so what we're going to do next is uh, wire these into the terminal block. Um, basically, uh, one of these things. Now we're going to wire them into two separate terminal blocks, uh, just so we don't get them mixed up. And then we'll have a, a start of a 12 volt and a 5 volt uh, bus that we can use on the layout. Alright, so uh, give me a few minutes to uh, cut up the terminal block and uh, get these screwed in and we should be good to go. Okay, so um, what I've done here is um, I've wired the uh, 12 volt supply into um, one terminal block here and then I've wired um, the other uh, 5 volt supply into this side of a different terminal block. Now you never want to connect these together for obvious reasons and um, now I've actually taken a, uh, these uh, permanent sharpie markers in red here and I've just uh, colored in one side um, just so I know visually um, that that is my 5 volt supply and um, that way I won't uh, ever accidentally get them confused when I'm uh, working late at night so um, the next thing we want to do is uh, actually hook this into the power supply um, now don't worry you can do this while it's plugged in uh, if you're a little nervy about this maybe uh, you don't want to do that now with these old uh, cables uh, you sort of just have to line them up and sort of control uh, the back of the cable here um, so that the crimps line up and uh, once they line up uh, you should be able to just um, have them connect and uh, they only go one way um, all right and there's no big bang so it's uh, all good so that's now hooked up to the power supply and we can go and do some sanity checking with the multimeter um, so this here should be the uh, 12 volt supply so we set the multimeter uh, on volts and uh, we change the range uh, back to our two decimal places and uh, we take the probes and we stick the red one on the uh, opposite side here and I'll try to do this so that you can still see both uh, that's not going to work uh, maybe like that and uh, then you take the black one and put it there and you can see uh, well, you're getting about 11.41 and with the uh, cheap multimeter here and you're probably getting about just under 12 volts so that's all good there so that's ready to go give us a 12 volt supply and then uh, you take the 5 volt supply and just stick uh, the red one in there and the black one in there and you can see it's given us the 5.14 that it was earlier so um, now we have our bus supply and we can hook this up uh, to our Dino and our relay board so that's what we're going to do next uh, we're going to hook these up and kind of rearrange the desk here just a little bit uh, so that you can see what I'm doing on the Arduino so give me a few minutes and we'll get this uh, hooked up and move on to the next phase okay so I wanted to show you that the uh, 5 volt supply would indeed uh, power the Arduino so um, here on the uh, red wire which is connected here uh, we have it going into the positive bus on the breadboard and then we have a black wire uh, going through here that's uh, connected to the negative bus and then down here we have a red wire um, that's connected to the V in on the Arduino and then we have this uh, black wire that's connected to the ground pin directly next to the V in connector and so if I uh, take the power supply here and uh, just turn it on uh, you will see that the Arduino is powered uh, this red light here because this is uh, one of the uh, Chinese based Arduinos um, has a slightly different light configuration but it is indeed working and powered and I think if I move it slightly uh, you can see the green light there as well okay so what I'm going to do next is uh, wire up the uh, 12 volt supply uh, to the relay board and then we're going to go and write some code for the Arduino to drive the relays uh, so give me a few minutes uh, to get that all set up and we'll uh, move on to the next part. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is basically program the Arduino uh, before you wire anything up. So we're going to connect the Arduino like we did last week um, to the Arduino software and basically uh, use this code, uh, verify it and then upload it to the Arduino and then we can uh, remove the power and um, plug it into um, the actual relay board. So this piece of code is uh, simply used to uh, test drive the point motors and what it's going to do is it's going to flick each relay on and off for about a second and then it's going to wait 10 seconds before it hits each relay. 
Um, the first block of code here defines um, the relays one through four plugged into ports uh, pins six, seven, eight, and nine. And um, we set a counter, and then we basically the in the setup function there, uh, those pin mode uh, commands basically initialize the pins for output. Uh, we open up the serial port for uh, sending out some code, and then we digitally write um, hi to each of the uh, functions. Um, and the reason we write uh, hi is basically just to um, turn all of those relays off. Um, so this is the main loop, and this main loop is very, very simple. Um, first of all, the count plus plus increments the counter, and the serial print lines basically output um, some test code uh, to the serial monitor. So in the Arduino code, there's a, a tool called the serial monitor, and you can run this code and uh, just check before you plug it in that it's working the way you want to. Um, the first digital write command there basically um, activates the relay by sending low uh, to the pin. Uh, it then tells us that it's on. The delay 1000 waits uh, about one second, and then it does it on a digital write um, high, which turns it off. Then it waits um, about 10 seconds. And then this is repeated for each of the relays, two, three, four, and, and so on. And uh, just to wrap up the bit of code at the bottom, uh, basically this just throws uh, the same code for um, the remaining relays, so two, three, and four. Um, so you can see there the serial print is basically just outputting the information to the serial port so you can see that the code's running properly. So um, if you um, save this code and then basically um, verify it and then upload it, uh, before you unplug it from the computer, you can go to the serial monitor and you can see it walk through the various phases. Um, we'll put the link for GitHub in the description as well. All right, uh, so we're back and we've uh, wired up the uh, 12 volt supply uh, to this relay board. So let me give you a quick look at the relay board. Uh, first of all, you should always touch these things um, by the outer edge, but don't touch any of the tracks underneath uh, or anything like that. Um, so this is a 16 uh, port relay board. Um, and basically it, it's very, very simple. It has a uh, 12 volt uh, input supply uh, right here. Uh, so you basically uh, put in 12 volts here, and the ground here, and that's what's connected to our uh, 12 volt supply here on the uh, yellow. So the yellow, and it goes this red, orange kind of colored cable here, and goes into the uh, 12 volt supply, and then the ground goes, is just in black here, goes into the, the black part here. So this is the 12 volt supply. Um, now, I don't actually know <laughs> um, how these are numbered. Uh, they're, the documentation uh, was in Chinese and not very helpful. So um, I basically kind of just, uh, we're gonna have to figure it out. Um, now the way this works is um, there's a five volt uh, output that's gonna go to the Arduino. So this will actually drive the Arduino. So um, what I've done here is I've taken one of these, uh, these are pinned and of course the Arduino is uh, a female um, hold socket. So these are pins which are male. So what I did was I um, basically got um, these, uh, female uh, cables that I had ordered and I basically plugged uh, one of the standard Arduino uh, pinned cables into it uh, to basically uh, rig together a connector. So um, this is the 5 volt pin and that's going to go into the 5 volt bus on our breadboard and then this is the uh, ground one and it's wired into a black cable. Now I've also got um, this uh, yellow cable that's been plugged into this orange part here and it's going to drive relay number nine. So what we're going to do is we're going to test um, re probably relay uh, nine to start with, and then we're going to figure out um, which one is relay nine, and then we'll, we'll work out the rest from there. Um, now the relays themselves have a uh, common, and then they have the uh, two sides of the switch to drive um, the point motors. And we're going to have to use two relays per point motor. Um, the point motor has um, uh, you know, two uh, wires on it that drive it one way or the other, and so we're going to have to connect one of those uh, to each of the relays, and then um, the common will just go to the board. Um, the reason we have to do that is you can't keep the power uh, supply to the point motor or you burn it out. Uh, you only want to power on it for a second or so, um, which is why we're burning up two relays. But still, on my layout, um, I'm basically going to have. Uh, most of the point motors configured in pairs, 
Um, so two relays are actually going to do two sets of point motors. Um, so I won't have any problems um, burning extra relays or anything like that. It'll it'll be pretty pretty okay and economical. Um, so what we're going to do next is um, wire it up to our programmed Arduino. So um, as you saw a few minutes ago, um, we showed you the code and how to uh, program the Arduino, and it's we tested out that code with our uh, serial line uh, monitor. Uh, so that we could see that it was actually invoking the commands that we wanted it to invoke. Um, so now we're just going to wire it up, basically. Um, so this is a little tricky uh, since it's really small, but basically um, the V in uh, that's here and the ground pin that's next to it, uh, those are going to go into the plus and minus bus here on the uh, breadboard. So if I uh, show you the breadboard, this is a slightly fancier breadboard than the one small one we used last week. Um, it has um, a bus that's connected laterally this way, so um, you can see here at the red line, uh, the top one is plus and the bottom one here is minus, so all the ones on this top row are all interconnected and all the ones on the bottom row are interconnected, and so the idea is you put your plus here, your minus here on one end, and it feeds the supply, and this is basically going to be for 5 volts for the Arduino. Then I also have a, a pin here um, to plug into the Arduino, so and uh, these ones are in the middle here, um, are basically wired uh, vertically um, this way. So we're going to use probably, we'll say, um, 35 as it's numbered here. Um, so we're going to use uh, row 35 to connect the Arduino uh, to the pin 9 here on the, um, on the board to drive the relay. So what we're going to do is just uh, wire this up real quick. Um, so the yellow uh, pin here is going to go to pin 6 on the Arduino. Remember we did program it to drive uh, 6, 7, 8 and 9 uh, but we're going to test it with uh, just the first pin. Um, the red uh, wire here is going to go into VN and the black ground wire is going to go into the ground pin next to it. Um, this here is the 5 volt supply and so it's going to go in here to the top uh, to supply to 5 volts and then this uh, black cable here is the negative and we're going to put that in the row below it like so and then the last thing we're going to do is wire up relay number 9 here to the row 35 so uh, just to uh, double check everything our 5 volt supply is connected here in red into this one and it's connected into VCC in on the Arduino. This uh, brown wire here is the ground for the same power supply and it's connected to this black cable and that black cable is connected to our ground connector on the Arduino. And then finally this yellow cable here is connected to row 35 on the breadboard and it's got this yellow cable here running to this orange one that's controlling pin 9. So it's all wired up properly, and what it should be doing is driving the motor. So let's turn it on, and we should hopefully hear a click. So you heard that click. Now, the way our code's set up, it's going to take quite a while. So now we know that this one here is 9. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is obviously 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. So what we're going to do next is wire up pins uh, 7, 8, and 9. And uh, it should drive uh, those other relays. So we're going to kill power to it. like so, and we'll uh, go ahead and wire up the other ones and we'll uh, show it to you running. Okay, so we've got everything uh, coded up and uh, wired up, so just to recap, um, we have our 12 volt supply uh, coming here from our PC power supply, um, the positive of that is going into the 12 volt supply here on the relay board, and the black wire here is wired to ground. Um, we have this uh, brown cable uh, supplying the negative uh, 5 volts power supply uh, to the breadboard and then we have this red cable here 
uh, and it's going through to the positive and that's basically supplying the Arduino uh, VCC in and the black one is uh, the ground and those are pins uh, side by side right here and then uh, we have our digital pins uh, the yellow one is wired onto the breadboard to row 30 goes into this uh, yellow cable here that goes into an orange connector and drives relay number 9 then uh, pin 7 here drives relay 10 and the, with the black cable uh, the red cable um, is really going into this uh, green one here uh, which is relay number 11 and finally this blue wire that's here is going uh, into this white wire and then into this kind of yellowish wire and it's um, powering pin number 12 so we should see relays 9, 10, 11 and 12 uh, go in sequence now I don't know if you can see it on the camera I'll try to move it around a little bit but there's a set of LEDs that light up when these are powered up so what we're going to do is turn on the PC power supply and this should kick in. So the first light has uh, gone out because when the Arduino first kicked in it uh, ran a few seconds of the code and then it passed its test and then reset and then it invoked it on and off. So you see there, it's switching it on for a second and then turning it off. And then it's waiting about 10 seconds and then moving on to the next step. So the first thing I noticed was that um, when this first powered on, it did turn all of these relays on. Um, so what we're going to have to do is uh, modify the code a little bit. Um, so that it initializes all of these um, high um, so that they don't supply power uh, to the point motor the whole time and uh, while it cycles through it. So we'll make that small adjustment to the code and uh, bring the Arduino board back and see if that fixes the problem. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take um, one of these um, point motors here and wire it up um, to the uh, controller and hopefully um, get the uh, point motor to activate from the Arduino. So uh, let me give you a few minutes to uh, fix up the code and uh, grab a set of points and we'll uh, get this uh, ready to test. Okay, so we've just reprogrammed uh, the Arduino, um, adding that initialization code. So hopefully, uh, when we turn it on, uh, these lights should all click out, and uh, they should only turn on for a brief second. So let's uh, power it up and see what happens. That's the first initialization relay, now it's reset itself. Second relay. 10 seconds later, the third relay should come up. Which it has. There's the fourth. So, when this light's on, it should um, connect these two together, I think. So, um, I don't know though. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wire up the um, point motor. So the point motor has uh, this is a Pico uh, PL11, and it has uh, the red wire will throw the point um, one way, uh, the black wire will throw it the other way, and then this one here is just the um, negative. So um, this will go into the uh, negative power supply uh, that we're using to trigger the um, 
the point motor with and then we're going to um, plug these into the relays and then connect the positive into both of um, the other side of the relay so hopefully um, when it works uh, this will uh, will connect and uh, throw uh, the uh, point motor force so um, I'm gonna go and we're actually gonna use these uh, safety minor it kicks out about 16 volt DC and it's uh, gonna be a little bit uh, more robust for uh, driving the points and remember you need the external power source anyway because all this relaying is doing is just acting like the the switch or button that you would press uh, normally to drive a point motor so um, let me go grab a set of points and uh, test the power supply and uh, we will go from there alright so we finally got this uh, wired up so um, this circuit is uh, still the same and what I've done is I've taken some uh, Pico track and this is a set of uh, set track ST I think it's uh, 241 or something like that um, left hand uh, set track points uh, we've got the Pico PL um, 11 uh, point motor wired up there and um, I've stuck the uh, points down with some blue tack where the pins would normally go so there's one two three and then four down here I've also stuck the four pins um, that would normally be nailed to the board um, with some blue tack as well just to hold it down um, I have this um, block here and that's basically got the uh, power source coming in this is the uh, positive this is the negative um, and the negative here is uh, connected into the common uh, green wire for the uh, Piku point motor and then um, the positive is connected to the uh, common here on the two relays so what should happen is by default when these are on um, or off sorry the uh, relay will will hit the right hand one is is closed so um, there's no wire in the right hand one so they just won't be driving the point motor and um, when it closes it connects the center one to the left hand one and so this first one will drive the points uh, that way and then um, it'll then stop and then hopefully um, the second relay will kick in and drive the points back um, at least that's the plan so we're also going to connect um, the power supply here to the Hammett and Morgan and so the Hammett and Morgan um, has some outputs on the side that are uh, supposed to be 12 volt but apparently they're coming out as about 15 volt um, so the one on the left on the Hammett Morgan is the uh, negative so we'll connect that up and then the one on the right hand side is the positive and I'm uh, just uh, connecting that up now uh, off camera here to the right and you can connect this to any kind of uh, power supply there's usually an accessory bus on your um, on your controller. All right, so that's uh, wired up. So what I'm going to do now is grab the multimeter uh, real quick and do a quick test uh, to make sure that this is uh, coming in as uh, the appropriate voltage um, before we try testing it. So uh, I've got the um, multimeter and I'll just set it here on top of the points. Um, I'm going to change the range to our two decimal points and then uh, negative positive and we're seeing there it's coming in oh we can't see because of the shine on the camera but basically it's coming in at 14.06 um, so um, what I'm going to do next is uh, turn this on and hopefully it doesn't blow up Okay, so uh, we have it working. I've temporarily uh, disconnected the uh, point motor from the points. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the DC power supply. Um, I tried it with the AC and it was doing the same thing. Um, it was driving the motor, um, but it wasn't uh, moving the points. So I'm suspecting I might have to modify the points a bit uh, to get this motor to work with them. Um, but for now, I can at least show you it uh, flicking back and forth um, on the uh, supply there. So here we go. You can see it's switched, and in several seconds it should switch back. It's gotten in the way of the 
really put it over. See if I turn it off, turn it back on. You can see it's flicked over, and it should flick back. Like that. Alright, so um, what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to go and find another set of points and uh, try this again with the points hooked up to it. Um, I think it's just uh, a little bit stiff, maybe. Um, Alright, so uh, give me a few minutes and we'll get this uh, hooked back up and you should see the thing in the uh, kind of final end product. Okay, um, so what I've done is I've uh, swapped out the point uh, that I had here. So I originally had um, one of the uh, set track points and um, the mechanism was a little bit stiff. Um, so I did find a set of um, streamline points that has a slightly better mechanism on it and um, we're going to go and um, test it out now. Um, I'm pretty sure it should work okay, so um, let's uh, give it a try. Alright, so there you can see that it's uh, working fine. Um, we'll let it cycle through a few times so you can see it going back and forth. Um, but that's basically it. So, uh, just to recap, um, we took the uh, PC power supply, um, we took the uh, relay board, and uh, the PC power supply provides the uh, 12 volt um, input to the uh, relay board, and we programmed the Arduino and hooked it up uh, to relay board uh, to control uh, four relays. And you can see here we use the uh, first two relays, 9 and 10, uh, to operate the point motor. So you can see here it's waiting about 10 seconds, and then it's going to energize the point motor for a second, and then turn it off. Now the way this is set up, um, I think we could possibly change the delay um, where it's on for maybe only you know, um, half a second or so. Um, so you can play around with that and, and see what works best for you. Um, like I said, uh, it didn't work very well with the set track points, but I think it might have been just a, a dodgy uh, set track point that I had. Um, works fine here with the uh, streamline points. So um, that's it for uh, today's uh, Tech Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, found this useful. I will uh, push the code uh, for this up to GitHub and I'll put the uh, link uh, to the uh, GitHub uh, repository in the comments or in the description of the video. Alright, so if you have any questions or any ideas, um, let me know. Um, next week we'll be uh, building upon this, um, probably uh, integrating maybe uh, some uh, signals or something into it, I'm not sure yet. Alright, so uh, that's it, like I said, for today's Tech Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, like I promised uh, last week, uh, it's something a little bit more mall railway orientated uh, this week. Alright, so hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget, uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, Loco Works Wednesday, and I do have a couple of uh, new Locos coming in as well, so watch out for uh, some upcoming videos uh, showing the new arrivals. Alright, until next time. So um, I did figure out um, why uh, the point motor was not working with the uh, set track points. Um, it turns out that it's very sensitive uh, to the track being level uh, with the point motor and um, the way I had it set up, it uh, simply was not uh, working properly. So um, now it's looking uh, pretty decent, so um, I'm quite happy with it. and. Uh, it seems to be working okay, as you can see there. And one thing I will note is the point motor is getting very hot. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe I need to uh, set that delay a little shorter. Um, but it is important that this is all flat in order for it to... Uh